Okay guys, so I'm back here with all my ridiculous looking anti-tank fellows. You can see <laughs> it's a little ridiculous when they're all just standing around with their giant shoulder mounted uh, rocket launchers. Holy crap. Okay, well anyway. The Orca, right? I actually kind of like flying this thing. Um, I like flying this because in my real life helicopter experience I fly in an MH-65 Dolphin. And uh, just like the Dolphin, it has a Fenestron tail, Fenestron style tail, which is this enclosed uh, tail rotor, All right? Just like the 65 Dolphin, the main rotor rotates clockwise as the pilot sees it, which means that, like the Dolphin, this thing has more or less the same type of flight characteristics <laughs> that it has, and not to mention the wheels. So that's why I like it. Anyway, hopping on in here, scrolling down, turning the engine on. Up in the top left, you notice one new uh, icon, all right? It's a little circle, a little, uh, little, uh, little parentheses on the outside of it, all right? That's the brakes. I'm turning the brakes on and off right now, all right? I'm doing that by pushing my hat switch on my joystick down, all right? I push it down, it comes on, I push it down, it goes off. I just have the brakes on and off um, keyed to the same button. All right. Nice thing about uh, wheeled helicopters in advanced flight model is that you can actually taxi on the ground. Right. You'll notice that uh, well, it's kind of hard to see it right now, but the main rotor, when this thing's resting, actually is tilted forward, which means that to taxi. All you have to do is add a little cyclic, uh, correction, add a little collective. You can see it there on the vertical speed indicator, a little one-eighth of a white bar. But with this helicopter, you can use no cyclic, or correction, no collective, and you can just push in the direction with the stick. You can gain quite a bit of speed going that way, too. And then you control your direction with your pedals, twisting left or right on your joystick. Twisting left. Obviously, you don't want to get going too fast in these turns. You can flip this thing right over. It is high, uh, top heavy, I mean. Right. Twisting right. Uh, it's one of my favorite features about an advanced flight model, funny enough. It's just being able to taxi, man. It's cool. Okay, so you remember that uh, in the uh, Hummingbird, the head spins counterclockwise, all right? Which means that you are adding pedal to the left to counteract the nose from swinging to the right or clockwise, all right? Also, left wing low for uh, counteracting the tail rotor. Everything's opposite in this helicopter. That's because the main rotor is spinning opposite, which in this case is clockwise, right? which means the tail rotor is pushing in the opposite direction now, which means that now, instead of getting pushed to the right, like I did before, now I'm going to get pushed to the left. Okay. And to counteract the main rotor head, spinning clockwise, to keep the nose from spinning counterclockwise over there to the left, I'm going to have to add right pedal. Oh. A lot more powerful helicopter, so uh, on the same token, everything will be more uh, pronounced. All right, so I'm pulling into a hover. I'm adding power. You can see it there in the vertical speed indicator. As I'm adding power, I'm already adding uh, about a quarter deflection, maybe one-eighth to a quarter deflection of right twist on the pedal. As it's coming up, I'm adding them together. I'm also starting to add a little bit of, see I don't have enough pedal, I'm starting to add a little bit of right cyclic, I'm pulling back a little bit too because the rotor mast is rigged forward, which means that you have to hover with a nose up attitude, there, there it is, quite a bit of right pedal, it's hard to tell with this setup down here, I can't just look at it and show you, but now, Instead of left pedal, I'm holding slight right, well, 
heavier control forces on the on the pedals now to the right and a uh, little aft and right deflection on the cyclic aft because the helicopter wants to naturally drift forward and I have to hover with the nose up attitude that's just because when you look at this helicopter when it's when it's resting the uh, rotor mast is actually rigged with a slight um, forward cant so uh, this thing wants to fly forward naturally just have to counteract that there it is you can see little, uh, right wheel low right auto hover is coming on struggle there for a second there it is yep right wheel low uh, a lot lower than it was in the hummingbird okay cool thing running takeoffs with uh, wheeled helicopters but uh with this um, tailwheel configuration on this. It's not so bad when the tailwheel is further back like the Blackhawk, but with this one, the tailwheel is so far forward that uh, it gets really squirrely really quick. Something to consider when you're landing. All right, I added uh, in collective, which means the nose wants to swing to the left, so now I'm adding a right pedal. Ugly. Oh, see, I'm getting pushed off to the left there because uh, the tail rotor. All right, you saw all my powers out. Oh, I'm pulling all the way back on the cyclic there to keep the nose from dipping all the way forward. Okay, so I'm going to show you how tremendous the forces are on this. When you're in forward flight, the more power you pull, accentuated it is All right you can very obviously tell without even looking at other references that I am flying with a right wing down attitude All right you look on the attitude indicator both on the helicopter panel and in my gauge cluster All right you see how much right wing right wing low I am All right that's just that's just the orca it's not broken it's not bent out of shape it's just a powerful helicopter with, uh, with a lot of uh, required heavy control inputs. Okay, so instead of flying around all day long, holding right uh, right twist on my uh, joystick here, and uh, and right uh, deflection on my cyclic, I'm going to trim it out. All right, so I have full power. So I know now that at full power, if I center my joystick. I will return to this position, All right? I am pushing the trim button now with my thumb, and three, two, one, there it is. Okay, I just pushed it. Hard to tell, can't really tell because uh, I'm not being as exaggerated as I was earlier when I was sitting on deck. But now, my new, uh, my new center point is this full power forward flight configuration. All right, so now I don't have to hold a twist in real life, physically, with my joystick, joystick, it's trimmed into the game. It's trimmed into the helicopter. Uh, the game's doing it for me now, um, and this is actually even a real feature on some helicopters, like the Dolphin, for example. Uh, maybe not so much with the uh, anti-torque pedals, but with the uh, cyclic, you can um, trim certain uh, channels. So, all right. Um, so yeah, I my joystick sitting on my desk right now is neutral. I don't have to do anything to fly in forward flight. Now everything is is uh, nice and docile. Now, with that said, you can keep this configuration. And oftentimes when I fly the Orca, I just I do. I find that high power setting. I trim it out for that. And then when I bring it into land, I actually like the landing characteristics much better with trim flight. I'll bring it into that little field right there by that uh, service station. All, right, all of my power's out. Dance around a little bit with the pedals here. Left pedal, left pedal, left pedal. Power's coming in. Half cyclic. 
Now cyclic, now cyclic. Power lines, got them. Okay, right pedal. This changes everything. Now the control forces required are much, much smaller to all this right pedal. Ah, geez, get away. Oh, that's right. Right, I was trimmed out for forward flight, so now I'm having to add a lot more aft cyclic, right, because I trimmed it for forward flight. Another thing to consider is that when you do manual trim, my brakes are off, now they're on. When you do manual trim like that, that manual trim continues on into your auto hover. So now auto hover will no longer hold a perfect hover on its own. It will always be influenced by whatever I trimmed. Auto hover's on. I'm not touching my joystick. Right, let's see what happens. It'll take a minute. Okay, so it does hold a pretty good hover. There have been times where I've uh, trimmed certain things and then put on auto hover and found myself fighting auto hover. Right, auto hover will always try and find a perfect hover, but if you trim outside of its capabilities, uh, you can you can over trim the helicopter for auto hover. You can also trim the aircraft in auto hover while you're while you're hovering, which is helpful if you're flying something like the Blackfoot and you got a door gunner, right? You wanna you wanna set up a right hand orbit. You just put on auto hover. You know you push the joystick all the way in the direction you want to fly. You know you can probably do 40, 40 kilometers an hour in auto hover with a little right right pedal like this. Okay, I just trimmed it. My hand is off the joystick. I'm in auto hover. My hands are off. I'm completely hands free. I got a slight turn, right? I just trimmed all of that in. Now, if I if I release auto hover with this configuration, the helicopter is going to go crazy. It's going to go cattywampus, like absolutely crazy. I'd probably crash and die from it. I'm not going to do that. I've done it before. I don't want to dem demonstrate it because I don't really want to go through the hassle of loading up a new uh, helicopter. So make sure, make sure that if you trim manual trim and auto hover, that you release it. Release manual trim before you take off auto hover. All right, so releasing manual trim now. There it is, manual trim's released. Helicopter's gonna find its hover. Uh, I'm gonna intervene before it does that. All right, auto hover's off. Now I have no trim. I released manual trim, I have no trim, okay? And you don't have to release trim every time you want to make an adjustment, all right? You just simply trim it at that new configuration. Uh, something to note when you trim your aircraft, okay, I'm trimming in three, two, one, there. As soon as I said one, I press the button, let go of your joystick, let it center. It's no sooner than you press the button, let go of the joystick, let it center up in real time, all right? Uh, and then fly from that position. I'm going to demonstrate what happens if you just continue to hold what you were holding. All right? You're basically just going to exacerbate, exaggerate uh, <laughs> your uh, profile. So if you're pushing forward and right on the cyclic like I was, and with a little left uh, or a little right pedal, I guess left pedal, um, you'll just go further into that state. Okay, releasing manual trim now. There it is. I release manual trim. All right. Find that straight line flight. All right. Trimming in three, two, one. I'm not going to release my control input. There it is. It took effect. I haven't moved my hand off the joystick since I trimmed. All right. It took about a second took about a second, but it finally registered, and you saw I started to roll further into my turn. Right, that's what happens if you trim and you don't let go of your joystick. So just, when you're using trim, trim it by pressing the button, and just relax your, your grip on the joystick. Let it, let it go back to neutral. Let your joystick go back to whatever neutral is for your joystick. All right, something I've noticed too is when you pick up speed, <laughs> watch as I slow down, my, my whole viewpoint is gonna like push forward. I'm not even gonna be able to see out that uh, chin window down there. 
right? You can even see it happening now. Slowly, ever so slowly, auto hovers on. Right? The slower I go, like the more forward my head goes. It's almost like that that extra speed adds uh well, I think I think it's only for the purpose of uh, giving you a, a sense of speed. Like, see right now, I'm looking straight and level, and the whole panel is taking up the bottom of my screen. When I take off and get that forward speed, you'll see the panel starts to kind of zoom away from me, zoom out, right? I'm looking straight and level now. My head is relaxed, straight and level. And now all of a sudden I can see out of the bottom left and the bottom right. All right. Which is something to consider when you're flying. You actually have more situational awareness in forward flight than you do in a hover. Which I think is uh, unfortunate because you know, for those of you who don't fly with track R like I do, um, you can't just twist around and do whatever you need to to see you lose a little bit of your uh, a little bit of that fidelity okay all right I've talked about auto trim I've talked about the opposite flight controls um, earlier I was talking about how the blowback you know when you get more airspeed the uh, helicopter wants to nose up or when you lose airspeed the helicopter wants to nose down and you have to counteract that all right same thing when you change power settings all right when you change power settings the nose is going to come up when I add power not so pronounced in this helicopter but something like the Mohawk very pronounced a hummingbird a little bit too um, obviously uh, no brainer when you lower collective nose wants to drop okay just something to think about if you're if you're changing airspeed and power all right you got all sorts of things going on the helicopter wants to do different things you just have to know what to anticipate all of these things are happening all at the same time power inputs require pedal inputs um, they also require cyclic inputs you know you're balancing everything more power means cyclic forward and right or left pedal depending on what kind of helicopter you're flying right less airspeed means the nose wants to dip you have to continue to pull back to counteract it Let's slide right over this warehouse auto hovers on enough clearance <laughs> should have known better alrighty well that concludes that I will uh, I will bring you back to the taru and I will talk about the taru next